to just stop when your body or your mind is telling you, I'm tired. When you come back to what you were doing, you're going to come from a full or overflowing cup instead of running on fumes. It's going to be so much better. Hello, I'm Dawn Bovey here with Lynn Mussolini, and we are interviewing or talking with our friend Cami Miller today. Um, we met her actually through a program that we're all involved in, and we have become fast friends. Cami does a special technique called neuro linguistic programming, and she's an abstract artist. So. I've done both of the, I've done the uh, program wing with her and it's amazing. Um, I'm just going to let you take it away from here, Cammie, and kind of tell people a little bit about what that is so they have an idea. Okay. So, hi, I'm Cammie Miller. Uh, Neurolinguistic programming, it's, it fascinated me because it's a type, it's, it's kind of a branch of hypnotherapy that it, it uses hypnotic language and it creates amazing positive shifts in very short amounts of time. It's kind of, um, it's kind of like our mentor just says it, it, it literally just shrinks time and, um, or folds time and you can get the same kind of results with NLP, which is, that's what it is for short. Um, that can sometimes take you months and even years in traditional therapy. And it's using yeah. um, where traditional therapy uses con the conscious mind, neurolinguistic and, and hypnotherapy uses subconscious mind only. Neurolinguistic programming combines both subconscious and conscious minds together to create those shifts. I love that. And, you know, I think that is so important for artists because what I've discovered in doing this podcast is that we have a lot of wounds. Artists typically tend to have a lot of wounds or creative people. We're hypersensitive. Um, we hold on to things. Um, and, you know, what a beautiful gift that you have to give people to create, you know, have that with the art to make a positive change. I, I am a huge fan of it. Yeah, it's, it's funny because um, I don't know how I kind of, I, I, I kind of fell into it, kind of like came through the back door. I'd listened to um, my coach and mentor's podcast for so long. And then all of a sudden it just, you know, how things happen and it's, seren it's total serendipity, total intuitive moment. Why don't you study NLP? Just pop in my head one morning. I was like, oh, I think I'll do that. I didn't even, you know, really read her sales literature or anything. I just went and signed up and it's, it really has been an interesting ride. It's been the best thing that I've done. It's connected me with so many new people. It's connected me with you guys. I mean, I never would have, had I not gotten my master's in NLP, then I wouldn't have um, ever met you guys because I wouldn't be in an artist mastermind with you. Right. <laughs> exactly. So I think um, it's important to tell people a little bit about your journey and okay. what brought you here um, to infuse art into your life, as well as the NLP, if you um, would like to share that with everybody. Sure. Um, so in 2018, I was actually a realtor and I was you know, starting to really build my business. And it was really starting, I, I had a partner and, and we were starting to grow that, that business. She already had a lot of um, clients and we were starting to work on them together. And a few days before Christmas, I got the news that I had breast cancer. Huh. And I went into that just, it was a huge lesson. I decided it was going to be my teacher and I was going to learn everything I could. It was just going to be a big adventure. And one of the things that came out of that was that I no longer wanted to be a realtor. And I picked up a paintbrush again. 
And I probably had not done that since my early 20s. And I'm currently I'm 49. So um, I went and bought three of the biggest canvases I could find at Michael's. And they ended up being four foot by five foot and just started painting. And it kind of grew from there. And then I decided something called me to start coaching. I, d I just wanted to coach. I wanted to get my um, certification, coach just certification. And so it just kind of built from there. I met Jess Hughes and um, started helping with her first, her media visibility group. And um, after that, it progressed to the NLP and the success coaching program and the hypnotherapy. It was, it was a threefold program. Um, and then Jess contacted me about being the NLP expert in her Illuminate group. And here I am. Mm -hmm. You mentioned, um, you know, I read your chapter, of course, in the creative life book, and mm -hmm. it's all about rest and restoration and really taking that time to slow down, which hit me hard um, because I'm, I'm like a go, 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 go. Mm -hmm. And, um, and actually, what was it? Uh, last night I came home from work exhausted, mm. like physically, emotionally exhausted. And I went up and I got my jammies on and I got in bed and I got on Facebook live and I said, look, I can't, I'm not going to do the paint party. One of my dear friends said something that really stuck to me. And it's when you're tired, you need to rest. So uh, we'll reschedule it for a later time. I think in, especially in our culture, we're driven, you know, the culture that, that equates success, how hard you work, blah, blah, blah. And we do not take time to slow down, be still and rest. So I would really like you to elaborate on that because your chapter was uber long, but so important. So important. Well, I, that whole, I mean, the whole go, go, go of the real estate culture. You know, the, I had to come to a complete stop and I wasn't working. I was, I mean, I was going through chemo. I was, um, exhausted all the time. And it was the hardest thing for me to sit in bed with my mind racing and um, just wishing I were out doing something else, anything else to just kind of calm things, you know, calm my mind and, and quiet things down. And I, I don't know why, but I started really getting into grounding techniques then and, and nervous system regulation then. And once I was able, you know, I started meditating more. And once I was able to do that, that's when the still calm voices came in and said, I don't want to do real estate anymore. Go buy the biggest canvases you can find. You will be compensated. I actually, what, what I heard was, you know, I sound like I hear voices, <laughs> but you know, it was, um, Go buy everything you need to paint and you will be rewarded threefold. And I was with just one painting. I sold one painting and everything that I'd spent on all of the supplies was handed back to me threefold, just about threefold. Um, but it was that that one thing right there, that one piece of into it, you know, in that intuitive hit, it only came about because I finally got still enough to listen. And it's the one thing that I can really say propelled me forward on this journey and got me to where I am now. Yeah. And if you take the time to just stop when your body or your mind is telling you, I'm tired when you come back to what you were doing, you're going to come from a full or overflowing cup instead of running on fumes. 
it's going to be so much better. Yeah, that's really, really interesting. And uh, it's really making me think a lot about how hard it is still, you know, I feel like I know this, you know, I've heard this a few different times. I mean, and I still feel like I struggle with it because um, like there's this uh, very masculine work culture Mm -hmm. and, you know, men have a 24 hour hormone cycle. So, you know, Mm -hmm. they rest and then they're like charged up and ready to go again. And we're all like trying to conform to, you know, a world that's kind of like, you know, ideal for a testosterone 24 hour cycle, not our cycles, which are, you know, 28 days approximately. (laughs) Yeah, that fascinates me. I've actually done a lot of, um, not a lot of research on it, but a lot of thinking about my cycles and, and not just, I actually wrote down the day at the months of the year and wrote what words really came to my mind for me and my personal cycles um, when I thought of that particular month. And we don't, if, if we as women were able to all do that, to actually sit and think, really put some thought into what makes us feel good and when it makes us feel good. I think we would be unstoppable. (laughs) We would absolutely be unstoppable. But we aren't really given that support to do that. And I I think I think it's things are starting to shift, but it's women like us talking about it and getting that word out and making it okay, making it more commonplace um, rather than keep, you know, to keep conforming to a masculine corporate mindset. Exactly. Exactly. Spot on. I mean, that's what it's all about. Elevating our feminine power, right? Mm -hmm. Because we don't have to be masculine in a man's world. I want to be me. I want to be me and I (laughs) want to be powerful and I want to shine like a woman. Yes. Mm-hmm. And yes. I don't want anybody's permission. No. <laughs> anybody's permission. We need our own permission. Exactly. exactly. Yeah. We've got to give ourselves, I mean, we are, we've got to give ourselves permission. Mm-hmm. That's the only person we have to take it from. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. When I think about an abundance mindset, because, um, you know, I've been reading a lot about money and abundance and receiving and, and really it wasn't until I got still that I was open to receive. That's when all the things start coming in. They're coming. I'm getting bombarded by things right now, but, um, I forgot where I was going with this. When I think about being still and the importance of it and, you know, making my voice heard. um, I think that's why we're all drawn together, us three. Mm -hmm. I think it is because we have all had different life experiences, but yet we're similar. Mm -hmm. And, and we've, we've started to rise to this power. And what a beautiful thing, right? It is. And you, you mentioned being still again, and it, it made me think, Lynn, um, you saying that it's hard and it is hard. It's so, I mean, it's hard because we're not used to doing it. It's, it's truly a practice. It's such a practice that I had it tattooed on, it's a reminder on my, I don't know if you can see it, but, but mm-hmm. it says be still in my own handwriting. Wow. Uh, because I do need that reminder. We all need that reminder because it's a practice. Um, and practice makes progress. We're never going to be perfect at it. Mm-hmm. And we have to give ourselves that grace. You know, we're going to forget. There are days where I'm like, why can't I get anything done? And I keep pushing. And then I'm like, oh, wait, wait, wait. I need to stop. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And um, it's it's just as, you know, it's it's just as important a practice as yoga or something else that mm-hmm. we know is a practice. <laughs> To actually stop. Yeah. And when I'm in that receiving mode 
and things are coming to me and I'm doing, 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 it's not work. When I was on vacation with my friend and, and, um, I said, I said, Oh, I have to do like, I'm, I'm going to do some work here. And she goes, but she looked at me and she goes, but it's not work for you. She goes, I think you need to call it a different thing. Cause I was talking about the podcast and meeting with you all about, um, the things that we're doing. And she goes, I think you should call it. I'm, I get to go do my fun now. <laughs> that's what it is. It's fun. She goes, you got to think of a different name for it. Cause really it's not work and it isn't. I love doing it. That revs you up. I just wish you would quit revving me up at three thirty three every morning because that's when I wake up and get all my ideas. Oh, interesting. <laughs> I have to keep my phone by the bed so that I can dictate. So I don't have to open my eyes. I can just start talking to, you know, talking to text. Uh -huh. Because I can't uh -huh. go back to sleep until I've gotten it out. Right. But you're right. I mean, it just revs, it revs me up. I've seen how it revs you guys up. Um, it's just, um, it lights us up from the inside. It's yeah, exciting. It is exciting. Yeah. So this is just, for me, it's like a huge paradigm shift because, you know, I'm, I'm the person who went to school for, you know, an extra 10 years and got the PhD. And then I did not one, but two different postdocs. And then finally had the audacity to apply for a faculty position. And then, well, I got it, but you know, there was all of this like angst and like, am I going to earn tenure because that's the goal or you get let go. And you know, here I am like the person that's like getting on this traditional path and doing all the things and trying to put myself out there and like really kind of pushing, 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 pushing. And I made contributions that I'm really happy about. But what the paradigm shift is, is that there is like, you know, people sometimes are looking for a path. They're looking for a recipe. Like you have to do step A and then you do step B and then you do step C but creativity is completely different. There is no path. It isn't like, oh, take this painting course or use this medium or meet these people or get your painting into this gallery. I mean, maybe some of the academic art word, world is a little bit like that, but there's no specific path. And, and I'm starting to hear this now that people are saying that you know, how they found success is just completely, you know, a, like a, I don't want to say, I don't want to say random, but it's just so completely unique that everybody is just finding their own way. And so I think we have to dial into our intuition. Like we have to find a way to be still, to hear that intuition, to have mm -hmm. the creativity because essentially business or entrepreneurship is really a, a form of creativity. And that's what we're doing. We're getting into creativity. Mm -hmm. and, we are. and if you think about it, we can throw this in there too. The feminine is not a straight path either. We're, and we're, we're very well equipped to take these little jaunts off the path and find ourselves further along the path, even after taking those detours. Mm -hmm. I think, and, and, and that's why, I mean, I think of creativity as such a feminine practice too. Now that, and, and in such a expansive way. I can kind of see that. Yeah. And, you know, a lot of um, men, um, many of them tap into that creativity but a lot of them don't. And you can see a difference in, in the ones that do like my, I've said it before on here, my husband's a knitter <laughs> and you know, he just, he'll just, he makes blankets for people and he, um, for the kids, he's made blankets and he puts different colors and threads in them and they're beautiful. And that makes him feel so relaxed and, you know, we, we now know scientifically that that increases work productivity 
in your regular job. Mm -hmm. Well, and this brings up a really good point that feminine and being physically defined as female are not the same thing because people who are physically defined as male can definitely have a very nicely developed feminine aspect of themselves. Yes. Yes. Yeah. And, and I mean, I know that we also, the, the opposite is true. We see so many females who stay in their masculine and are just driven and very goal oriented. And I'm going to say right here, I am not goal oriented whatsoever. <laughs> I can set vague goals and be very happy with that and actually make progress. But the minute someone tells me you need to set a concrete you know, financial goal, for example, or just to do this many things. And I'm like, no, nope, no, nope, no. Nope. I know myself well enough now to know that I can't. Mm -hmm. Are y'all like that too? And we don't, ha I don't have to, because I know that I'm wealthy. I love I'm that. Being, being around you is so joy. <laughs> Being around you has helped me so much. I'm just going to tell you in that with that with that concept. Yeah, it's so true. I wanted to talk a little bit about your art practice because I know that's very important to you, and um, I don't know if you have any art handy that you want to show us, but I've yeah. seen some of it and it's incredible. So, can you talk about what that does for you? want to see it. Um, well, I'm not at home. I'm actually house sitting for someone. So oh. I don't have any here. But um, it's funny because mine kind of flip flops back and forth. I'm um, intuitive abstract use mostly acrylics on large scale canvas. Um, I never know what's going to come out uh, on the canvas. Never. I will go in there and grab a canvas and just write on it. I'll usually journal on, I'll use it like a journal and just whatever comes up sometimes with Sharpies, sometimes with oil paint, I mean, pastels, um, just anything at hand. And then usually it all gets covered. It gets covered with the first layer, but, um, and I'll, I'll pick crystals to have in the room and I'll, I'll, I'll use some Palo Santo and cleanse the canvas, uh, cleanse myself pick some great music and just start painting. And I usually dance while I paint, um, flip the canvas around quite a bit. Uh, and it looks pretty bad for a good long while. <laughs> I start getting kind of discouraged. And then all of a sudden something comes out. And, and like I said, I never know what it's going to be, but I always know when it's done. Hmm. So it's more of a meditative process for you. It it is. And it's funny. I haven't been doing it as much lately. I've been writing a lot more. So I go back and forth between the two. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm starting to feel just seeing y'all's paintings behind you. All these colors are like formulating in my head. And I'm thinking, oh, I think I want to go do that. And so I have a feeling it's coming back. I kind of put it, I did put it on the back burner for a long time. While I was doing master practitioner for NLP. But I feel it slowly creeping back in. Yeah, I haven't painted uh, since before vacation. And I just picked up a paintbrush today. And I'm like, oh, thank <laughs> you. Needed this. I feel so much better. Like, I was trying to get it in a little bit this morning before we started talking. And I'm like, oh, it's like a, it's like a big exhale yeah. for me. Uh -huh. So I, I feel it's really important. And uh, I think it would be remiss of us not to mention that we three are now a team. Right? We're a brand. <laughs> we are a brand. And uh, uh, we, you know, it's something that's really important to all of us to uplift, inspire, empower women to do exactly what we've been taught. Look at her shirt. Her shirt. Uh, this is a painting I painted more than a year ago. Yes. Oh. How fitting. <laughs> because we want to have women harness that feminine power. 
Yeah. So it was like, it just happened organically. We all three came together and we're like, Hey, we're going to do these retreats. Mm -hmm. Right. Yes. And it's going to be magic. In fact, Cami, you have the, the statements. If you I want to do see. the mission state mission and vision, let me pull it up. All so, right. One moment, please. <laughs> Yeah. So, so wait, let's tell them the name of the, let's tell them our name first. Mm -hmm. Fem Powered. Fem Powered Mission. We help women unleash, nourish, and expand their feminine power by using creative practices and techniques in the sacred heart aligned containers of our magical retreat experiences. And our vision is that it's kind of twofold. The gifts we share are building blocks for continued restoration and growth while strolling on the path we call life. We will inspire continuous growth, elevating women worldwide with our collaborative approaches to expand the feminine power within. And I would like to make sure to stress that word worldwide because that's kind of exciting. <laughs> this is exciting. Yeah. So we exciting. Have a huge network of people from so many different countries uh, mm -hmm. to lean on and in, in terms of bringing the retreat around the world. Yes. It's already I'm happening. I'm going to be halfway around the world in uh, like two months from now. <laughs> I know. I know. And, you know, I think it's so cool because we all, um, we all jive with our mindset and yet we, we each bring really unique gifts to the table. And that's really, you know, when you say the word magical, that's what's, that's the magic of it. Like the way we've come together and we have these special gifts that we're bringing. Um, I don't know about you, but like, I love listening to Lynn talk. Like she'll say these words and I'm like, oh, yes, yes, I feel that. And, you know, I'm a little bit um, high energy, whatever. <laughs> And, and, you know, the thing and this NLP that you have, I mean, I've experienced that. And of course we're all artists. So how fun is that going to be? But I am like, mm -hmm. I am super excited about our journey. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that's what it's all about. It's about the journey. Yes. Yeah. This yeah. has been a fantastic journey with you guys. I I couldn't even have imagined, um, I'm going to get weepy here. I don't even know where this is coming from, but honestly, I couldn't have pictured a better ride and I'm really grateful. Sorry. Um, I've I'm just been emotional. Grateful. I don't know. I... I'm very grateful too. I think that just the way this has all come together and that we have just, we've created this alchemy, our, just the meshing of our personalities and souls, the way that we all connect when we get on these calls, um, mm -hmm. start batting ideas around just floors me. When I look back over some of our conversations, it's just, it's, it's truly coming through us, but it's all three of us combined. It, we, not, no one of us could do it without the other two mm -hmm. is the way I've, I've seen it. Yeah. We're creating the secret sauce. The secret sauce. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. I think it's like there's an intuition, you know, level thing, you know, maybe like a soul level recognition. Like I remember the first time, you know, connecting with Don, you know, it, you just reminded me of, you know, a friend that I had when I was a kid and back in Minnesota. And there was, you know, a girl just, you know, maybe two years older than me who I kind of looked up to and her name was Dawn. And I never met another Dawn since then. I don't have a connection yet. I don't know, you know, like why you seem so familiar to me as well. But, 
you know, it's just, that's part of the intuition, you know, like the intuition mm -hmm. kind of tells you like, you know, in kind of your body and your nervous system, like when something is right or, or wrong. Mm -hmm. And I think that's mm -hmm. what you're talking about when you're talking about mm -hmm. resting and being still. And so you can really feel like, what is the body telling you? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. And, and well, I'll tell you since, since you shared that Lynn, that, um, you know, I was on a call with Jess and we were just talking after one of the, uh, calls, we were talking over work stuff. And I just said, you, would, you would share during a call. And I mean, I don't even remember what you said now. They, that, and that's that, that adage about, you, you don't remember what they say. You don't remember, you know, but you remember how somebody makes you feel. And I just said, oh my gosh, the light in Lynn is amazing. And Jess was just like, I know, right. <laughs> mm -hmm. And that was one of the first calls. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You. And, and it's funny because, um, I reached out to Lynn, um, really early on because I was just like defeated. Like I had that feeling of, I'm not good enough. I got ditched. This girl doesn't want to be my partner. I messed up. I mean, all these negative bombarding thoughts were just hitting me. And yeah. I don't know why. I really don't. I can't explain it. But for some reason, I reached out to Lynn. Mm. Will you be my partner? <laughs> <laughs> and that was before this podcast idea. Yeah. I had an accountability partner <laughs> for that thing. And I was like, yeah. yeah, I have one, but sure. Why not have another? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you can't plan these things, really. You really can't. Yeah. Thank you. Um, I really appreciate your kind words. It's, um, I don't know, it's just shocking because I feel like such an outsider sometimes in the art world because, you know, I went to, I went to school for all the STEM stuff and I've identified, you know, as like this kind of STEM person and it's, it's been taking me a little while to kind of unwire, um, you know, and rewire as an artist, as a creative. And so I even try to bring my, you know, the artist mindset into my day job because my day job's still kind of supporting, you know, the art stuff. But anyway. Yeah, it, it's it's a balancing act, you know, um, for those of us that are still working full time, you know, we go to this job where you're using your brain power and all this. And then, and then you got to come home and shift and jump into the art thing. And it's challenging. It's really challenging. I mean, I imagine it would be like that with any kind of life circumstance, right? Well, and I think this is the, um, I think this is also the thought error is that somehow we think, and I, I'm guilty of this too. Um, really frequently, like somehow we think that, you know, we have to go and make stuff happen, you know, because we're going into kind of a male culture. And so we start, at least I, you know, I put on my masculine hat and, you know, we need to have that masculine hat once in a while, but I keep it on a little bit too long. And so one of the things that we talked about you know, what does this femme powered thing mean? And for me, it really is a paradigm shift where we're really thinking more from the intuition. So it doesn't matter like what the title of our job is at work. Um, maybe the identity still matters a lot. Um, Cami, I want to hear you um, talk about that. But I think it doesn't really matter what the title of the job is. You know, if we go to it with that creative kind of mindset, with that feminine mindset, with that, like listening to the intuition, I think we can, we could be rocket scientists or whatever your favorite flavor of whatever is. Right. I think it, I think it really, when, when you were able to shift and start bringing that creative mindset into a more corporate workspace, I think that it just helps make the things you do there a little more rich, more 
substantial. Like it's got, a, it's almost like it's got teeth. Like, like I was there's, like, there's thinking flavorful. It's flavorful. But, but like you're pulling from you're pulling from your heart. You're pulling from your from your gut from from your gut instinct instead of just thinking. You're actually putting some feeling into it, and it adds another another dimension, another facet to what you're already doing. So yes, I mean I think it's very much value added when you're able to tap into that while you're doing something where typically that would not be something you would access or that you would even think to access um, as a, as an asset. Mm -hmm. And in the past, it hasn't been an asset. You know, there, there are a lot, I think, I think places, I, I think corporations are getting a little more open to the idea of bringing that, that creative component into the business and into the workplace. Whereas before it was just like, nope, this is the way we do it. And this is the way it has to be done. Mm -hmm. we're, we're seeing more of that now. Yeah. Still not enough, but we're seeing more of it. But Cami, what do you think? Um, maybe people are in denial and they want to rationalize everything. But I still think that perhaps the energetics of the exchanges between people are still really guiding what is actually happening. What do you have to say about that? Um, so you're saying they're denying their creativity, but the energetics are still at work. I think that um, the energetics are still at work, but people are probably trying to rationalize it. You know, it's like if you're interviewing different candidates for a job, you know, you have to fill out all these forms and whatnot to try to like rationalize and justify everything. But at the end of the day, people are really making gut level decisions which are basically energy. Mm -hmm. I, I agree. I think, I think that happens a good bit. The, and the, the call and you're right. The culture would rather you check all the boxes on the paper than go with your gut. And I, I think we're seeing a little bit of a shift in that, but I, I also agree that we have a lot further to go. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Because there, there are still so many people that are going to stick to the rationalization and say, well, that doesn't make sense on paper. So, and that's kind of where we have to get away from is, and that's, I, I would say that's probably another, I, I'm big on practices. And I'd say that's another practice. You have to get away from thinking, well, it looks good on paper. Let's go with it. Instead of really weighing what feels good overall. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it's a compromise. Sometimes it's straight up go with the gut. But you have to, I think that's just, it's, it's a skill you have to hone. And you have to, you have to learn to trust yourself to make those gut level decisions more and more often and act on them instead of saying, well, but this makes sense on paper. Mm -hmm. I think fear has a lot of, lot to do with that too. On the other side of that intuitive thought and that jumping in, there's fear. Like, there's fear. well, what if I do this and it doesn't work out? Then what will what? people think? What will people think? How will I, what if I don't make any money? That How am I going to pay my bills? What if, what if, what if? That's all fear, all fear. But yet, I've never made a decision that's killed me. You know, yeah. I've never made some kind of jump leap that has been so detrimental to me that it was awful. I've made some bad decisions. Don't get me wrong, but none of them have really altered my life. Yeah. It makes me think about Big Magic and that story she tells in there. Liz Gilbert tells in Big Magic about um, fear will always have a ride, but it's always going to be in the back seat, and they're never going to get to give directions. Yes, I just listened to that. I know, and that I latched onto that because yeah, to say that we're going to get rid of all of our fear is not it's not realistic. We we we're always going to have it, but let's shove it in the back seat. Mm -hmm. And they are not allowed to be a backseat driver. <laughs> yeah. 
And I think it would be good, Cami, if you could remind people like how to tell the difference between fear and intuition. Ooh, well, I know it's not an easy question, huh? It's not, um, I don't know. That it's really cut and dry. I mean, for me, I, when I, when I was going through treatment for cancer, I really got good at listening to my body. Obviously I had to. Um, and something I noticed about, and this is just me personally, and there are several other people I know, Don, you do the same thing. When it's my intuition, I get chills. I get chills when it's something I know I need to listen to. I get chills. Mm -hmm. Um, When it's fear, I feel it more in my chest. It's like it sits here. Solar plexus is where I feel my fear. You feel yours a little lower. Mm -hmm. I feel mine in my chest. It will wake me up at night sometimes. Mm. Um, But yeah, the, the, the full body, just, just a shiver. And I'm like, okay, I'm listening. Tell me what to do. Mm -hmm. And that just, I mean, that's going to be different for each person. But I think once you start really tuning into what you feel in your own body and the way that I always, um, the way that I always instruct people like the easy peasy, no brainer way, to really get in touch with your body is to just start breathing normally, just, just but to notice the air entering your nose and exiting your nose and not to try to count how long your breaths are or anything, but just to start consciously moving that breath down into your belly rather than in your chest. And that's, I mean, that is where I tell everybody to start. So you guys, know that I'm in a recovery program and you know one of the things that they talk about that I've been taught is intuition is something that you learn Uh. it it becomes easier and easier and at first we try and look for it and as we practice it and practice it and practice it we we just expect it Mm-hmm. because it just comes. As soon as you said that, I got chills. Because mm-hmm. mm-hmm. it is, it's yeah. a learn, it is a skill. It's a learned skill to listen to your body and listen to your, listen to your intuition. Because we are not ever, the thing is, is that we are taught from a young age. I mean, the most impressionable age from one, you know, from birth to seven years old, not to listen to our own, you know, intuition. I mean, we're, we're told what to do and no, don't do that. It, constantly. It, we're, we're bombarded with what we should do. Mm-hmm. I'm just going to read this to you. In thinking about our day, we may face indecision. We might not be able to determine what course to take. Here we ask God, our higher power, the universe for inspiration, intuitive thought, or a decision. We relax and take it easy. We don't struggle. We're often surprised how the right answers come after we've tried this for a while. So true. Yeah. It's a practice. It's a practice. Let go, lean back, and let it come to you. Yeah. And then you just expect it because it just keeps happening. It's like being in the flow state. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. You're tapped into the source. You're going with it. You know, it's right. There's no doubt. Yeah. I'll I'll tell you, Lynn, especially um, since you said, you know, you struggle with being still and, and being able to quiet your mind and, I have, since we have formed Empowered, and I know our path, I I felt like every day before that I was spinning my wheels and doing all of these things, but I didn't know where I was going. And now that I know where we're headed, I'm not, I'm not as busy doing things that I don't know whether or not they're moving the needle. And it's, 
it's a strange feeling because it's almost like there's this vastness in my in my head now where I that, that it's, there's a lot of white space, which is great. But I still have that thought that I need to be doing something. I need to be doing more. And then I'm like, oh, no, no, I don't. I'm actually done the things that are going to move the needle today. And mm -hmm. everything else is gravy. Right. Hmm. So it's still, I mean, it's a practice. It's mm -hmm. such a practice. Mm hmm and also, I think it had, you know, you have to give yourself a little bit of uh, leeway, Lynn. You're at a busy, busy phase of your life right now. Mm -hmm. And sometimes all those little things that we have coming at us mm -hmm. can raise that vibration that we're feeling. And, you know, it takes time to settle that back down. So, I mean, that's just really part of the cycle of life, you know, mm -hmm. um, we have a an instance in your life that's that's painful or you know something doesn't go right financially i mean it can all throw us off a little bit but the more we practice this the more we get right back into that funnel mm -hmm. of flow yeah yeah that's definitely really great yeah i think just giving ourselves permission to rest, you know, just really coming back to that because, you know, at the end of the academic year, I always feel, you know, just drained because, mm -hmm. you know, it's a, it's a bit of a push for nine months, you know? And so it would be ideal if I could go on vacation at the end of the academic year, but it doesn't line up with my daughter's academic year. <laughs> they don't get out of school until June. So here I am kind of waiting. Mm -hmm. <laughs> anyway well this has been i mean i don't even know what to say wow this has been a wow moment moment for me i don't know about you guys but i love talking to you guys i love it i love talking to you guys too and we get to do it again tomorrow morning i know how exciting <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> A work meeting. A work meeting that's fun. It's a fun meeting, Lynn. <laughs> it's actually one we like to have. It's actually a Zoom call we like to have. I actually like all my Zoom calls. Yeah. I love all my Zoom meetings. Yes. They're all fun. They're all creative. They're all uplifting and empowering and inspiring. And um, that's the kind of things I want to add more of to my life because yeah. I don't I mean, know. I don't do anything I don't want to do anymore. I really don't. I like that. I gave myself that permission. That is so smart. That is so smart because I've been hearing um, something similar, which people have said that um, maybe you've heard this quote, but you know, when we're feeling burnt out, sometimes it's not about the list of things that we quote unquote have to do, but it's the it's the permission to do the things that we want to do. Want to do. You know, like if I don't get my painting time and I'm just giving all of my energy to the day job, then yeah, I get a little bit burnt out and it's mm -hmm. not, it's not healthy. So, you know, I need both. Yeah. 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 I did. I recently, it just, I came to the awareness. I mean, literally it was one of those three thirty AM things where I was like, I, my life isn't guaranteed. No one's life is guaranteed, but I had a very aggressive form of breast cancer. It could come back at any time. And if it comes back, it most likely will come back in my brain. So I thought, why, why waste any time doing things that I don't want to do? And sometimes that requires a mindset shift. You know, you have to do some things that, but, but when you make the shift from I have to, to I get to, mm -hmm. it actually does make a difference. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That's funny. I should have called you at 3.30 in the morning because I was up too. <laughs> when did I text you, Lynn? I think it was like 3.30 or 4 in the morning. I sent you a text. <laughs> well, you can always text me because I have my phone on Do Not Disturb. Okay. Also on Do Not Disturb. It, it was on Do Not Disturb. I'm like, oh, oh I know. 3.22, she... Don. 3.22. 3.22. <laughs> <laughs> well, I wasn't aware yet because it was just two twenty-two here. Oh, that's right. 
<laughs> two, two, two. Hmm. two, two, two. That's my number. Hmm. There you go. <laughs> nice. Nice. <laughs> All right, Cami. we are definitely going to link some of your, um, whatever you want us to link, you know, your NLP practice. We'll probably link the um, retreat information. I'm just putting it out there. We have a lot of people on the wait list, but we are going to have several retreats and some of them are going to be in, well, all of them are going to be in fabulous locations. So. Okay. Even if you don't get in on this first one, please get on the list because there's going to be more opportunities for you. Yeah, you'll get the advance notice as long as you're on our email list. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. All right. Well, any um, departing words of wisdom? Any LL NLP ninja words? <laughs> NLP ninja. <laughs> no pressure. <laughs> Well, not that I can really think of. I mean, my two big things are to give yourself permission and love yourself more. Um, oh, my goodness. That is I, have, I have that on my arm, too. See? Oh, of course you do. <laughs> um, I got that when I was in Sedona. Just I was like, oh, I think I'll go in here and get a tattoo that says love yourself more. <laughs> At ascension tattoo hmm. is that not the best name how yeah. can i not do it um but love yourself more and, and that just basically for me means do i love myself enough to not you know to do this thing that i need to do or want to do or to not do this thing that is bad for me so powerful don so mentioned powerful. recovery and that i i've recently um gone back into recovery myself from alcohol. And um, that was one of those love yourself more moments for me. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Yep. It is a, it's, it's a loving program. That 12 step program is so is. loving and it uh, so it's inclusive. taught me so much. It's, it's the really the, the one thing that, um, I mean, it was, crucial that I was involved in that when Brad died or I probably wouldn't be sitting in this podcast with you guys right now. I'm so glad you had that. Yeah. And the fact that there are so many creatives that are in the program is just amazing. I mean, it makes total sense, but it's, of course so, it does. it's so great for us. <laughs> yeah. 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 So. Okay. Well, I, I mean, I could talk forever, but we got to <laughs> this to about an hour or, you know. <laughs> so. Well, we've already had a couple of mic drop moments, so. Yes, we have. <laughs> yeah. So. Me, thank you so much for your precious time. And I can't wait to talk to you again uh, tomorrow. Yeah. Um, more retreat planning stuff. Yeah. I have yeah. really enjoyed this. Yeah. Yeah, you're definitely you're definitely going to have to come back. Definitely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're going to be a regular. Yeah, you are. <laughs> <laughs> this was a great conversation. I mean, it flowed. So, all right. I love you guys. And um, I'll talk to you tomorrow. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Awesome.